Ok, on est ici avec les francophones pour le Front Uni hein, de convergence, à, à notre convergence de <rire> internationale, intercommunaliste. Ok, on y va. Et je présente, il y a Red Wasp en Belgique, il y a Dunia en France, euh, autrement de Naples, mais maintenant en France pour le moment. Ouais. Alors, euh, récemment, et en effet ce matin, là, il y a un une attaque qui était euh, amenée par le, le régime, l'État sioniste contre l'Iran. Et c'était envoyé en, comme un swarm, en anglais, c'est mot, en masse des drones, des centaines de drones qui étaient envoyés pour attaquer le système de défense d'Iran, les sites de radar qui sont euh, installés pour faire détecter les avions de F-16, F-35 euh, qui viennent. <coughs> à porter des missiles balistiques comme cadeau pour l'Iran. Mais ça n'a pas réussi parce que tous les drones sont, sont descendus par les défenses. C'était incroyable, les vidéos qui ont montré uh, qu'il y a des, comme des pop-corns dans le ciel, un après l'autre qui éclatent. Tout, 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 comme les pop-corns, là, mais éclatant, là, dans le ciel. Alors, c'était réglé. Alors, il ne peut pas entrer maintenant avec les F-16 et F-35 parce qu'on peut les voir. Et si on peut les voir, on peut envoyer quoi? Ah, la Russie a donné les S-300, S-400 et S-500 missiles de défense surface à l'air. Ça veut dire pour euh, faire finir avec les avions euh, américains là, qui sont envoyés. Même s'ils sont avec des... Euh, des les avions qui font recharger l'essence le, pour les avions pour euh, prolonger leur euh, durée et, et, euh, et euh, euh, distance dans laquelle ils peuvent faire euh, fonctionner euh, leur, leur euh, travail euh, impérialiste. Oui, j'aime ça, la, les graphiques que tu viens de faire, Red Wasp. C'était avec euh, un IDF, euh, c'était trans, trans, euh, transcrit comme... Euh, Imperialist Death Forces. Oh, j'aime ça là. OK, on doit trouver, uh, je dois te um, faire une chair pour ça, pour montrer ça à tout le monde. Mais uh, pendant que uh, tu peux nous dire, décrire ce quoi qui était en train de faire avec cette graphique là. Non, en fait, euh, euh, moi, moi j'aime vraiment pas, ça me fait mal d'appeler l'État sioniste, ce, ce projet. Euh, fasciste euh, euh, colonial, d'appeler ça Israël, parce qu'Israël, c'est le nom de, de, du peuple euh, juif, c'est le nom de, 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 du peuple à qui appartient beaucoup de mes camarades. Donc, je, je n'aimais pas que le I dans IDF, c'était pour Israël, puis défendre euh, ce qu'ils font, c'est, euh, en effet, c'est tuer des gens. Donc, le D, euh, ça, ne, ça, ça ne pouvait pas être pour défense, mais force, j'ai euh, laissé comme ça. Et là, une fois que, que, que euh, euh, il, il faut trouver des, des moyens de propagande, de, 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 de des graphiques qui sont très clairs pour montrer une idée, euh, une contradiction euh, très vite euh, avec euh, le, le texte et euh, quelques éléments euh, pictoraux. Je pense que ça, il faut faire des propagande comme ça. Euh, et euh, puis, euh, je n'aimais pas aussi que dans leur logo officiel, ils ont volé le, le, le symbole de, euh, du, 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 euh, de l'olivier, parce que en fait, l'olivier, ce n'est pas seulement un, un symbole pour euh, la Palestine, mais aussi pour la paix, et les sionistes, euh, c'est l'envers. Donc, j'ai pris une autre branche, euh, j'ai un peu changé l'étoile euh, avec des fils barbelés pour montrer euh, l'essence de, de cet état. Et puis, euh, j'ai aussi euh, changé le nom euh, en, euh, donc, en hébreu, euh, parce que euh, là, c'était aussi euh, Israel Defense Force. Et j'ai changé, changé ça euh, aux forces... Euh, d'annihilation euh, euh, des, des peuples. Euh, et puis, j'ai fait un, 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 un graphique pour cela, euh, pour, euh, pour euh, Inch'Allah, le, le, le distribuer et, et, euh, 
vous l'utilisez dans notre propagande antisioniste. Voilà. Et voilà. Alors maintenant, tout le monde peut prendre une image en, en copie pour faire partager partout. Ouais. Oui, mais, mais comme, comme tu m'avais euh, dit que euh, Oh, il y a un problème avec ton micro. Ton micro oui. euh, est en statique. Il bug. C'est en saccadé. Ok. Ah. Attends. Oh. Maintenant, c est, c est, ça marche ou non? Euh, ça marche mieux, mais c'est un problème encore. Il y a, la, prise la, connexion pas, la connexion est, est faible. Alors, la prise peut-être... C'est pire. Encore pire. Ok, attends. Oui. Donc, euh... Pour, pour euh, le, euh, le, le, le graphique que j'ai fait, en effet, le but, c'était d'avoir de, de, euh, un, une image pour notre propagande quand on parle de, de l'IDF, euh, pour montrer leur vrai sens. C'est euh, une force impérialiste euh, euh, de, de, ouais, de, de massacre. Donc, euh, euh, Israeli uh, Death Force, c'était... Euh, c'était le mot qu'on qu avait commencé à utiliser euh, il y a quelques temps. Et puis, je voulais faire euh, un parodie quoi, de, du logo officiel de l'IDF, mais pour montrer leur vrai visage. Donc, je n'aime pas le fait qu'ils ont pris l'olivier, le, le branche d'olivier, qui est un, un symbole pour pas seulement la Palestine, mais aussi pour la paix. Euh, deux choses... Euh, euh, avec, la, euh, avec laquelle euh, le sionisme n'a rien à faire. Donc, euh, j'ai aussi essayé de, de, de faire un peu euh, de, de, de relief dans, euh, dans l'arrière-plan et montrer, euh, euh, comment on dit ça, un, 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 un skull. Euh, oui, un crâne. Un ah, crâne. Oui. Aussi, tu, tu viens de changer le, le nom Israël, qui n'est pas le mot d'un État. Non, non. C'est le nom d'un peuple, euh, peuple, peuple juif. Oui, euh, j'ai vraiment, ça me fait mal chaque fois que quelqu'un euh, utilise ce nom. Euh, pour moi, euh, en tant que musulman, euh, notre Coran, il parle de, de Béni Israël, le, le, euh, les enfants d'Israël. Ça, c'est un peuple. Il y, a, il y a beaucoup de mes amis, de mes camarades qui appartiennent à ce peuple et qui voulaient vraiment n'avoir rien à faire à, 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 avec ce projet colonial. Donc, euh, je ne voulais pas que le I était pour Israël. Euh, donc, il y a des camarades qui disent, ouais, euh, nous, on, on dit que c'est le IOF, Israeli Offense Force. Euh, D'abord, je trouve que c'est un peu confusant parce qu'il n'y a pas tout le monde qui comprend que IDF et IOF, c'est la même chose. Et, ouais. euh, et puis, je n'aime pas le fait que euh, le nom Israël est, euh, reste euh, partie de cela. Donc, euh, dans mon graphique, j'ai fait euh, un peu, euh, impérialiste, impérialiste euh, et puis le D, ce n'est pas pour défense, mais c'est pour euh, des massacres, pour death, pour, pour la mort. Donc, euh, et comme ça, on avait changé le nom euh, en, Israël, euh, en euh, impérialiste death force et en dessous, le nom en hébreu, ça veut dire euh, la force ou l'armée pour euh, massacrer des peuples. Hum, mmh. wow. Et ah, aussi, euh, aussi, aussi euh, dans, dans le Tsaral, euh, avec le même acronyme que leur nom euh, officiel, en euh, soi-disant hébreu. Oui, ça, ça va gagner l'attention des sionistes, sûrement. <rire> oui, on pourra même faire des t-shirts avec le logo Abraham. Avec, oui, euh, les dés ça, ça, oui. Uh -huh. Sur le dos, oui, oui. Okay. Ou devant, ou derrière, mais... Oui. Donc, uh -huh. toutes ces euh, um, œuvres graphiques euh, que j'ai fait c'est tous euh, euh, pour la bonne cause. Donc, tout le monde peut les, les, les distribuer, les, les, les appliquer dans notre propagande. Um... Mm -hmm. OK. Alors, 
Qu'est-ce qui se passe en France, Tonya? C'est quoi qui, 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 qui va avec ce gouvernement-là? Qu'est-ce qu'il fait? Est-ce que ça va reconnaître la Palestine enfin ou quoi? Euh, non, je... non. Euh, ils ne reconnaîtront pas la Palestine, simplement que, que Macron, euh, à un moment donné, euh, a taclé un petit peu Netanyahou en lui disant de ne pas oublier que, que son pays n'était pas son pays, mais que c'était un État qui avait été donné par l'ONU. Donc, Netanyahou l'a un petit peu mal pris. Et alors là, il a répliqué en disant « mais nous sommes les amis euh, proches d'Israël ». Et alors donc, Netanyahou a été invité euh, sur les plateaux télé. Euh, concrètement, si Hitler était en vie aujourd'hui, il aurait été invité sur les plateaux de télévision française. Donc c'est une, euh, une propagande complète, parce qu'en fait, euh, finalement, il donne la parole à un génocidaire. Et donc, ils sont complices, euh, vraiment complices du terror, enfin du j'allais dire terrorisme, mais du génocide, ils sont complices du génocide, et ils mmh. donnent la parole à un génocidaire, et ils ne mmh. donnent pas la parole aux Palestiniens. Mmh. Donc ce n'est pas objectif, puisqu'ils pourraient dire qu'ils donnent la parole aux deux, pour entendre les deux, mais non, ce ils mettent bien en avant Netanyahou qui est invité par Laurence Ferrari, par des... qui est détesté maintenant, parce que euh, la, la France devient très, très pro-palestinienne, et, euh, et ces présentateurs télé qui ont invité Netanyahou à la télé en France euh, sont détestés, vraiment sont détestés et boycottés. Et c est, c est, euh, je ne comprends pas comment on peut faire ça, je ne comprends pas. Donc non, la France euh, reste bien la jumelle d'Israël et continue de lui fournir des armes alors que la CIJ euh, lui a interdit de le faire. Donc euh, on attend… Euh, j'ai euh, une, euh, une influenceuse qui, qui est géniale, hein, qui a dit euh, à Laurence Ferrari qu'elle l'attendrait un jour au tribunal de Gaza. Mmh. Oui, au voilà. tribunal de Nuremberg. Ouais. Uh -huh. Exactement, à Gaza. Donc, ouais. euh, la France est pro-israélienne au niveau du gouvernement et continue de lui fournir des armes par quelques billets que ce soit et de les financer, et c'est terrible. Je compte même changer de nationalité. Je, je veux plus. Euh, J'ai mmh. honte d'être française. J'ai vraiment honte d'être française. Mmh. Mmh. Incroyable. Voilà. Alors ouais. Ouais, voilà pour la France. Hein. C'est de pire en pire. Euh, à chaque fois qu'on croit qu'on a touché le fond, il creuse encore plus bas. Uh -huh. ouais. Voilà. Ouais. <coughs> On ne peut rien attendre du gouvernement français. Euh, je... En tout cas, moi personnellement, j'ai plus d'espoir puisque personne respecte. Euh, tout le monde cautionne ce génocide et c'est triste. Mmh. Ils s'en foutent complètement de la parole du peuple. C'est pareil qu'Israël. Mmh. Voilà, ils sont, ils sont pareils. Et ici, Montréal, ils fabriquent encore des armes qui sont vendues à les compagnies américaines. Non, ce n'est pas vendu, c'est les compagnies américaines qui les fabriquent ici à Montréal. C'est General Dynamics. Ils, ils fonctionnent ici à Montréal. Malgré les manifestations dans la rue, alors qu'il ne fait pas attention, il ne va pas là. Il, il va je... pour faire des autres choses, mais il ne fait pas attention je pour les choses sociales euh... comme ça. Oui. D'une fille aussi euh, qui a été, euh, c'est une gentille fille qui me suivait quand j'étais en Palestine, elle s'appelle Amira Zeiter et euh, elle habite à Nice. Donc à Nice, il faut rappeler que le maire de Nice est Estrosi et que c'est un pro-sioniste. Le 7 octobre, il a dit « Nous sommes en guerre <rire> ». Estrosi, tu es en guerre tout seul, nous, on n'est pas en guerre. Euh, donc, euh, eh bien, ils l'ont incarcérée pour apologie du terrorisme, ce qui signifie qu'elle est allée en prison, donc euh, prisonnière politique. Et ils l'ont accusée de faire des choses qu'elle n'a pas fait, euh, dont des menaces, télé, des menaces au téléphone, et ce n'est pas vrai du tout, euh, ce n'était pas des menaces. Et, et, et comme elle est voilée, euh, moi, je connais son langage et je sais que c'est une femme très douce et qu'elle aurait été incapable de faire ce genre de choses. Donc, ils l'ont mise en prison et là, elle est sortie provisoirement. Mais le comble, c'est qu'il y a un soldat euh, sioniste qui est rentré de Gaza et qui se porte partie civile à son procès. Alors, en France, on a le droit, euh, un génocidaire a le droit de se porter 
partie civile, j'en perds mes mots, dans un procès qui dénonce un génocide. Euh, le procès d'une femme qui dénonce un génocide et il y a un génocidaire qui se porte partie civile, un homme qui a commis de nombreux crimes à Gaza, qui a le sang sur les mains et qui a le droit euh, donc de se porter civile au procès de cette femme. Elle risque dix ans ferme. Mmh. Mmh. Voilà où on en est en France. Mmh. Wow. Et, et toi, tu es et... sur le garde vue aussi, là. Ça t'implique, toi. Moi, j'ai fait euh, notamment 12 heures de garde à vue, donc de 9 heures du matin à 21 heures avec une perquisition chez moi, où ils ont voulu inclure l'aspect religieux... Euh, euh, dans mon combat alors que moi j'ai toujours eu des amis juifs c'est un juif qui m'a appris qu'on pouvait aller en Palestine il s'appelle Serge Grosbach euh, j'ai lu l'UJFP derrière moi donc l'Union des Juifs pour la paix si j'ai quoi que ce soit comme problème euh, j'ai des juifs qui témoignent pour moi que je ne suis pas une anti-juive alors j'ai été euh, convoquée pour trois postes sur Facebook et je ne me bats contre personne c'est le CRIF qui est devant moi Puisqu'en fait, on m'a déclaré en me signalant au fichier WOF, je crois que c'est le WOF, et c'est le fichier des terroristes. Donc, on a signalé mes postes pour terrorisme et donc, ils m'ont convoqué. La, la, la chance que j'ai eue, c'est que je connais une association qui s'appelle la Legal Team Antiraciste et que j'ai contacté quand j'ai eu ma convocation et qui m'ont envoyé gratuitement un avocat en garde à vue. Et... Euh, et je crois que je suis une des seules qui ne passe pas au tribunal. Le procureur n'a pas poursuivi parce que je me suis bien défendue, évidemment. Et euh, ils ont voulu me… parce que j'étais… c'était dans… déjà les postes là, c'était au mois d'octobre, début octobre. Alors je leur ai dit, c'était l'émotion d'une… parce que mon comportement, il a toujours été éthique depuis dix ans et j'ai toujours eu des propos cohérents par rapport à ce que je dénonçais. Je n'ai jamais attaqué les Juifs, j'ai bloqué ceux qui attaquaient les Juifs, j'ai bloqué ceux qui voulaient passer ça sur le combat de l'islam, parce que pour moi, ce n'est pas un combat religieux, c'est un combat euh, je, politique, tout simplement politique. On parle de colonisation et, et qu'en Palestine, on tue tout le monde, que ce soit des chrétiens, des musulmans, des communistes, on les tue tous. Et en plus de ça, sur la carte d'identité d'un Palestinien, il y a marqué sa religion. Et quand on les voyait se faire assassiner, Abraham, il ne leur demandait pas leur carte d'identité pour savoir s'ils étaient musulmans, communistes ou chrétiens. Il les tue. Donc, c'est bien Israël contre les Arabes. Alors, j'ai démonté pendant toute ma garde à vue le sionisme du judaïsme. J'ai démonté l'islam, le combat religieux, du combat politique. J'ai dû démonter aussi les groupes politiques palestiniens de leur résistance parce que ils m'ont dit « mais qu'est-ce que vous pensez du Hamas ?» euh, Je leur ai dit « mais le Hamas c'est un groupe politique, moi je suis apolitique. Ne me parlez pas de politique, parlez-moi de résistance. » Et la résistance est permis dans le droit international pour tout peuple qui vit sous occupation. Alors je suis restée quand même droite dans mes pompes, parce que peu importe les résistants, ils ont chacun leur groupe politique, mais nous on s'en fout de leur groupe politique. Quand ils résistent, ils résistent tous ensemble, c'est un peuple. Donc j'ai réussi à bien me défendre, ils m'ont dit « mais… » Pour toi, c'est quoi la résistance Alors, je leur ai dit, pour moi, la, le fait de vivre pour un, un Palestinien, c'est résister. C'est un enfant qui va passer trois checkpoints pour aller à l'école. Pendant ces trois checkpoints, il va prendre des tirs de gaz, il va prendre des projectiles de la part des colons, mais il va continuer d'aller à l'école. Alors, il résiste. Ça, c'est pour moi de la résistance. Au-delà de la résistance pacifique, où les jeunes, ils ont des pierres, et en face, il y a des armes. Voilà, moi, ce que j'ai vu. Et donc aussi, j'ai raconté que j'avais été kidnappée moi-même par le Shin Bet. Alors, je leur ai dit, si j'ai fait l'apologie du terrorisme pendant quatre ans, alors que je l'ai dénoncé, pourquoi vous ne m'avez pas attendue à l'aéroport lorsqu'ils m'ont kidnappée Pourquoi la police ne m'a pas attendue Pourquoi aujourd'hui, tout le monde a fait comme si de rien n'était Vous avez été complice de mon kidnapping. Et mon avocat, il a montré tout ça quand j'étais dans la Jeep, quand… Toutes les photos qui ont été prises, les reports de, des Palestiniens qui disent que Dounia vient d'être kidnappée, que tout le monde appelle à appeler les ambassades. Mireille Rumeau, qui à 10 heures du matin ne savait pas encore où j'étais parce que l'ambassade elle n'était pas capable de leur dire, personne ne savait où j'étais. Et que nous, en tant qu'internationaux, on n'est pas sous régime colonial. Donc c'est la police qui devait m'arrêter. C'est un kidnapping puisque la présence de l'armée là-bas, 
elle est illégale au regard du droit international, c'est une armée coloniale, elle n'a rien à faire là-bas. Et alors, ils n'avaient pas à me prendre, ils n'avaient pas à détruire tout un immeuble pour venir me chercher. Ils ont tiré dans ma porte, ils ont... Alors, ils sont où ceux-là Si moi, je suis là aujourd'hui, ils devraient être en face de moi. Mmh. Donc, euh, je me suis quand même bien défendue. Pour le sionisme, je leur ai dit que ça partait à la base d'un mouvement évangéliste, parce qu'elle me disait, vous appelez à casser le sionisme à la racine. Je dis oui, et je le revendique. Il faut casser le sionisme à la racine. Et, et elle me dit, mais alors vous appelez à casser du juif Je lui ai dit, mais non, mais en off, je lui ai dit en off, je vous invite à étudier le sionisme et vous verrez que ça part d'un mouvement évangéliste à la base. Alors, les, ils veulent tout voler, mais il faut quand même apprendre les termes. Et non, le sionisme n'est pas du judaïsme. Alors, c'est quoi pour vous le sionisme pour moi, le sionisme, c'est ce que Daesh est à l'islam. C'est une idéologie politique mafieuse. Mmh. Et alors, quand tu te fais arrêter, c'est pour ça que c'est important. Tout le monde peut être solidaire, mais à partir du moment où tu prends la parole, où tu défends vraiment, où tu t'exprimes au nom d'un peuple, il faut savoir te défendre derrière. Il faut connaître bien ton histoire et bien argumenter. Et alors, elle m'a dit aussi, mais pourquoi Dunia alors, je vous dis parce que Dunia, ça veut dire le monde, mais je lui ai dit Laetitia, en latin, ça veut dire la joie. Voilà. Je lui ai <rire> je lui dis, vous, vous avez bien des petites pierres. Elle avait des, elle avait des pierres, tu sais, des cristals de roche, des amets. Je lui dis, ce n'est pas pour ça que vous êtes chamane hein, ou que vous faites du Reiki, non mmh. Alors, parce qu'ils m'ont saisi mes livres religieux chez moi. Et ils m'ont gardé jusqu'au jour d'aujourd'hui deux téléphones portables. Et ils ont pris en photo mes kéfiers. Ils m'ont ils demandé mes réseaux sociaux. Alors, je leur ai dit, euh, dans les réseaux sociaux, j'ai Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Bonjour. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Telegram, euh, X. Euh, euh, j'ai dit que j'avais… Euh, Comment ça s'appelle ce, ce réseau russe VK Elle me dit, bah, ça fait quand même beaucoup. Je lui dis, oui, mais vous pouvez aller voir partout, je reste éthique. Ça sera toujours la même chose partout. Mmh. Donc voilà, euh, sur les postes, c'était ça. C'était euh, le témoignage d'une otage euh, qui… Mais sur le témoignage d'une otage, c'était une vidéo et il n'y avait qu'une impression d'écran. Ah, je leur dis, alors, pourquoi c'est une impression d'écran et vous n'avez pas mis la vidéo là elle me dit « mais qu'est-ce que vous voulez dire par ce poste ?» Parce que j'ai dit « alors là, on va encore les traiter de terroristes ». Alors, c'était une otage israélienne qui disait que les, les Palestiniens étaient rentrés dans sa maison, ils étaient quatre, et qu'alors, il lui avait demandé de, de, s'il pouvait prendre une banane. Et alors, euh, elle lui a dit « mais bien évidemment, vous pouvez prendre une banane ». Et il, il est allé prendre la banane, et il y en avait plusieurs des bananes, mais il n'en a pris qu'une. Et il l'a divisé en quatre pour donner à… À ses, à, ses, à ses collègues, à ses, aux autres Palestiniens. Et elle était surprise et lui a dit « Par Dieu, nous sommes des musulmans et personne ne vous fera de mal. » Alors j'ai dit « À travers ce poste, j'ai voulu dédiaboliser un petit peu la situation et mettre un peu du beurre dans les épinards. Mmh. » Voilà. Mmh. Et à la fin, bah, « Qu'est-ce que tu veux qu'ils me disent Ils m'ont relâché. » Et encore, il n'y a pas longtemps, j'ai appelé mon avocat. Il me dit « Mais ils ne poursuivent pas. » Mais j'ai eu de la chance, enfin, je me suis bien défendue parce que tous les autres, euh, celui qui est à Montpellier, il doit payer 20 000 euros au CRIF, Amira, elle risque 10 ans. Alors, je ne sais pas ce qu'ils ont raconté, hein, mais je pense que je me suis bien défendue. Mmh. Voilà, mmh. pour ma part. Très bien. Um, ok, uh, welcome to uh, Cara here. Uh, she is in uh, England, uh, the so-called uh, uh, not so great Britain. And uh, uh, he's introducing you to uh, Dunya now as well in France right now, and formerly a comrade in Naples with whom I worked. And uh, she was just explaining how she was taken in for interrogation, and she was put under uh, interrogation by the police, you know, because she's supposedly, you know, a danger to the state. She, <laughs> she is. <laughs> They better be careful. Obviously, look at her, you know. <laughs> well, when you bring so that... Yeah. knowledge is power community is power and that is why they consider us dangers because the more we interface the more we build the more we struggle the more they fall 
and so yeah. it's all about the beauty of struggle. They show yeah. me that I have the power in this time because if I if I didn't do anything, they will not uh, they they don't have the reason to come to take me. So they give me more power when they do it. Like they they give more power to the Palestinian day by day. To just one minute. Tu avais une question pour moi, je crois. Tu allais poser une question. Uh, uh, it was only that we had been joined by a comrade of whom I wasn't really sure if she understands French or not. So wow. I um, don't understand French. <laughs> okay, no problem. We will continue in English. But uh, we was talking about uh, some people in France. Uh, they put a lot of people in the in the police station. You know. And uh, one friend of me, she 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 risked to take ten years, ten years to the jail because uh, because she she speak about Palestine, and now she's uh, realized. But there is a soldier, French soldier, come back from Gaza, and he go to this court against her. Uh, did did you believe it? It's crazy. It's mm -hmm. about. And great a need for terror because the France out of any of Western Europe has had the largest organized like protests out like in, uh, excluding the Palestinian protests. I mean, the last like 20 years where protesting has like almost not existed in a lot of Europe. Yes, like France, Spain, some of Italy. And then sometimes the UK tends to be all you ever see in Western Europe. And France has kind of been this sort of shining gem of struggle compared to all other places. And so after the two Yellow Vest events and then the um, the opening up of the Intifada struggle in 2020 and 2021, this has created a great deal of fear amongst the French authorities um, my Irish ass is stuck with the English, so they're not as scared as the English over here as the uh, uh, the French scare the, the bourgeoisie there. The Palestinian Intifada has increased struggle here, but not enough. <laughs> One thing that I, I would like to add, um, because the, um, the person uh, who... Uh, also uh, uh, entered as a civil party in the uh, court case against a comrade in France. Um, so uh, a French uh, uh, um, Zionist who went fighting as a mercenary in um, uh, the Zionist uh, colony and then came back. Um, he should be afraid because here in Belgium, we have um, uh, uh, the, uh, well, actually worldwide, but one of the leaders of this organization lives in Belgium, uh, Diab Abu Yahya. Um, ha they have started um, a court case against um, a thousand um, IDF soldiers um, for war crimes. So mm -hmm. not against the leadership, not against the government, but against individual soldiers, both mm -hmm. um uh, people who have the, the nationality of the Zionist state, but also uh, people who like the, the guy who um, was a civil uh, party in the case, um, people with another nationality like French or Belgian and who committed war crimes in Palestine and then came back. Um, so all of these will be charged uh, based on um, a very strong file where all the evidence of every individual crime um, and how it can be related back to that person is put on. Also, where all their social uh, network uh, atrocity propaganda that they used, so all their TikTok movies and, and so on, celebrating their atrocities. So these are all put into evidence. And inshallah, over the next few months, there will be a court case against them. Hmm. Maybe I one day we, we, we should try to have uh, Diab on uh, here in the Convergence and, 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 and have a chat with him because hmm. uh, it's a very, I, I think it's one of, we have to fight the struggle on all fronts and the legal front is one of them. And I think that this is one of the interesting developments uh, on that front. Um, yes, Council, this is the thing that communists make great mistakes on as well, uh, be they anarchist, be they Marxist, whatever fucking special flavor of communism you are, um, legal legality gets neglected, 
Um, uh, uh, illegal struggle gets neglected too. I have no idea what people are doing if you neglect both sides of struggle. But the um, oh, we got we got newspapers. But the uh, what's it? Even if, like uh, even if we didn't actually have the privilege of having accessibility to such a comrade to bring him on, we should be talking about this kind of event because mm. this is a precedent. And if a precedent gets set that goes against the protesters legally, that goes worse against us. It, it, it's one of those reasons why, like, you know, fascism's coming. You would rather deal with the social fascists than the fascists because you can still legally operate. So it's like there needs to be as much room to breathe as possible until they eventually seize onto you because they're going to pounce at some point and you want to be ready to suck a punch them straight in the side of the temple when they do. Mm. Actually, I, I should access... uh, mention. I should mention that uh, I myself am going to trial January the fifth for the charge of uh, criminal uh, mischief. Under <laughs> the, you did uh, a big crime. You wrote something on a poster. That's that. That's I think worse than genocide. No. Yes, it's dangerous to be a writer. You know. Like, you know, I got in less trouble for fucking like vandalizing a church when I was like seventeen, eighteen, or whatever. Like, um, <laughs> it was not a good thing. I was in, I was fucking ashamed of it at the time afterwards. But um, it's a thirteenth century. But did church. you write and a free Palestine? Um, no, it was like, uh, yeah, like, like, okay, like childish bullshit. I was drunk, and then with some like really badly enabling people, and we ended up like spray painting on doors that are several centuries older than I am. It's a really embarrassing <laughs> thing, but like. You know, we, we've all had our edgy phases. Um, I don't like destroying cultural artifacts personally. But the, um, yeah, I got community service. That was it. I had to go do some gardening. I didn't have a court hearing. I didn't have anything like that. I did go in for like um, an interrogation, but I don't think they took my fingerprints, thank fuck. Um, <laughs> I'm avoiding little shit and that sort of stuff. Huh. I mean, they took yeah. everything. I print my uh, uh, DNA. They took everything for me. But um, uh, of course, I don't go to the court. I am proud of that because I can kill myself if I need to give the fine to the grief. I can't. Oh no, that no. The grief. And what explain? One should explain. You know what grief is. You know it's like the central. Uh, a uh, Jewish bourgeois organization in France that uh, essentially uh, has a dictatorial control over over anything that happens in the uh, Jewish community and speaks on behalf of the community without being elected, I might add. To be fair, though, hmm. it's one of those, it's that crazy situation we have with the 30s again. The Zionists' control over the Jewish community might be stronger than it was then, but it's the same. It's a paper tiger. Its control mm -hmm. is paper thin and ready to break because, you know, the, I see way more in the UK specifically. I see way more of the anti-Zionist Jewish community than I ever see any Jewish Zionists. The only Zionists I typically see here, if they're not big bourgeoisie, is uh, Christians. Mm. Mm. Makes sense. Yes, sorry. Here in France... We have, uh, there is a new association, I don't remember the name yet, but I will give you later. And he, he have 90,000 Jewish back to him against Israel. That it's in France, we never see them. We never see them because they killed the voice of these people. Mm -hmm. That is crazy. Mm -hmm. You see, you believe it, 90,000 Jewish against Israel in France, yeah. and we mm -hmm. never saw them. Yeah. It's and here, crazy. And here in uh, Montreal, I'm not getting, uh, you know, support from the movement, you know, for my case that is uh, before the court January the 5th. I didn't get any support. I still haven't gotten any support from the from the organizers, from the demonstrations you know nothing nothing at all you know just i i'm working with a movement lawyer richard Beaulieu james you know who's excellent you know he's a serious yeah. guy but other than that you know like i'm i'm still on my own like i was at the vigil you know in front of the jewish community campus you know every sunday for six months you know the other 
Jewish uh, Marxists, anarchists, whatever, you know, they don't show up. They're afraid to do something like that. The Jewish protest movement, I think, only goes, has uh, here, only goes into the Palestinian demonstrations where they know that they can, are welcome. But to actually have an effect inside the Jewish community, still afraid to do that. It's incredible. And these are supposed to be, you know, militants, comrades, revolutionaries, socialists, communists, anarchists. No, they're afraid to come into the Jewish community where it counts. And then I proposed that we have a march with, you know, car caravan as well, you know, but calm and serious and determined with a banner saying, help stop the genocide and walk right through the Jewish community and put the put it up, you know, into their faces, you know, so that they have to decide. Because right now they feel like, you know, they don't have to decide. They can remain neutral. <laughs> you can't remain neutral in the face of a genocide. No such thing. So we have to confront them, but it's not being done. So, you know, that's why I express my pessimism at various times. But, and I don't think that, you know, the Zionist state is going anywhere until, you know, they lose, you know, the 75% of the Israeli Jewish population, popular support that they have. Even amongst the Jewish Arabs, the Mizrahim, they have support. who want them to go even further. They want the war to continue. This is what is maintaining, you know, the Zionist state. It's that 75% of the Israeli Jewish population. Uh, even without the diaspora, you know, they couldn't care less, you know, about the Jewish diaspora. You know, we can be protesting, you know, and we're now a majority, you know, in the Jewish diaspora who opposes, you know, the war, the occupation, and the genocide, you know, they don't care. They don't really care about the Jewish people. We, who are a majority, who don't even live in the Zionist state. No, all they care about is the amount of support that they have amongst the Israeli Jewish public, and they have it still, 75%, 25% in opposition. There's a polarization. It's getting, you know, like further and further apart. can even break into a civil war. But the Zionist state, Netanyahu and his fascists, still have that 75% support, and they're going to use it. You know, as long as they can they get the guns and, and the bombs from the United States and the social support and the soldiers, you know, from from the Israeli Jewish public, they'll continue. Nothing's going to stop them. So we have to address that Israeli Jewish public. We have to undermine Zionism from its base of support, but it's not being done. That's where I get my pessimism from. I, I I don't know if anybody knows the 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 two. Um, it, it's hard to identify them because they they don't no longer like to be identified as Israeli or Jewish. So I think Hebrew Canaanite people living in the Zionist state occupied Palestine. But the two guys they they have a podcast, the One State Solution, and another podcast named Yalda where they're actually trying to find ways to reach those people in the Zionist state who might be open uh, to an opposition. They're actually going um, in Tel Aviv, where they live, they go into the streets to uh, make music, to try to music against the genocide. Um, and they had uh, the, the latest or the, um, uh, I think the latest episode of their post podcast is um, full of songs. They actually made a lot of songs which are Hebrew and English, modern Hebrew and English mixed and um, all about free Palestine and so on. So there is mm -hmm. something of a movement. There are propagandists there. Mm -hmm. um, I still believe that the most important thing that um, worldwide in the diaspora and in occupied Palestine that the Jewish anti-Zionist movement needs is more unity. And I, I believe that the Bund has to play a role in that because this, the Bund uh, and the Bundist movement is like the only movement that has the potential to be this organizing and uniting platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I think they be... because um, here in France, the CRIF, the CRIF have the power to break your work, to they kill your life. So. I think they are afraid because they have in the work and the child and me, my friend, uh, Serge Grosvac, they break him. They, uh, they, do the, they did a lot of bullshit to his son, to his wife, 
they kill his life, but he continue, he resist. But I don't know if the people uh, Jewish are, are ready to leave this situation, to have this situation in their life. So maybe they are afraid for that too. They, yes, they are afraid for them uh, social life, yeah. for um, them war. Yeah. They, they are not ready to lose everything, to fight. But if they are together, they cannot break 90,000 Jewish. How they will do it? Yeah. Yeah. And if they won't let us uh, teach at the university, like I have been boycotted from teaching at the university for the last 36 years, ever since I worked at the Palestine Embassy in Ottawa during the War of 82 to 85. So, you know, with 90,000, though, we can set up our own university. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of academics amongst them. So yes. we don't need to have, you know, the uh, bourgeois institutions. Since we're boycotted and excluded, okay, well, let's set up an alternative. You know, let's start to build our new society. Yeah, come it's on. built to build to have... power. We do have to engage in some ways, as Lenin rightly pointed out, if you want to make a new society, you want to take the world to a revolutionary situation, and you're afraid to form a band of heroic revolutionaries inside a reactionary parliament, is that not childish? So we do need to have a progressive Labour Party that is at the very least sympathetic to the revolution, if not an active supporter of it. And then it creates this opposition, a real opposition, not the Her Majesty's opposition government. I mean, an opposition, something that actually brings some weight into this fucking situation. Heck, if the Labour Party hasn't forgotten, that was how it had come to existence. Mm -hmm. It took advantage of people's needs for an opposition and the people got the Labour Party the recognition it needed for the bourgeoisie to then go, oh, wait. We need to take advantage of this. You know, you compare it to the Labour Party of the 1870s, the original like Labour Party, and then compare that to the Parliamentary Labour Party, and you have like two completely different organizations. But it was based on the advantage taking that they could, that they took advantage of it. We need something that's revolutionarily controlled, um, or at least in comeuppance to us. Uh, uh, but it needs to be in uh, it needs to be in paradigm with active struggle on the streets. It needs to be in paradigm with active struggle through local legal institutions. It has to be with active struggle through our infrastructural programs, both the existing infrastructure and the infrastructure we create for dual power. You know, we shouldn't be doing sewer socialism where we try and fix the capitalist system. We need to be trying to build dual power and get ourselves out of this. But at the same time, we need to be little bastards inside of their parliament too. As a parallel to what you're saying, Kara, you see, this is the uh, T-shirt from the 2001 uh, conference in uh, Chicago in which we formed the Jewish opposition at that time. It was both uh, North American and South American uh, delegates who came to that. See, and, and the, the occupation, occupation. Jewish... A Jewish. Uh... Oh, you vanished. Where am I? Well, oh, here it is. <laughs> I forget what it says here. Jewish voice. Unity. Jewish unity for just peace. Yes. I mean, it's so old now that it, it's coming apart. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that it's but good use. <laughs> just as you were saying, you know, Kara, that the working class needs to be represented in Parliament. You know, as an as a, an autonomous, you know. Uh, working class voice, you know, even if it's reformist, you know, it's still important because it can protect, you know, the revolutionary struggle. Same mm -hmm. thing in the Jewish community. How come, you know, the Jewish movement, Jewish alternative, the Jewish opposition like this is not in the Jewish parliament, which is the American Jewish Congress. We should insist upon being able to get into the Congress and hold votes against the occupation and embarrass those fascists into revealing themselves. Just so that the Jewish their image. community can see it yes, as well. Yes, destroy their can. image in the Jewish community so that we can have a revolution from within as well as from they without. go rapid, it'll happen in Parliament. You know what Parliaments are like. 
always it always turns rabid everyone shows their true colors eventually so you just yes. have to keep pushing their buttons by voting against them and the next thing That's you know yeah. you'll get a churchill rant i will not give up a single piece of his majesty the king or the emperor of india's empire to anyone <laughs> that's what he was saying he was, this was a it was a nine hour rant in parliament because uh, parliamentary rules is until the parliamentary chamber has ended it can't be closed. And the people who have come in for this voting session, because this is during a voting session, he decided to do this, uh, where they're debating on a, a bill. You're not allowed to leave, is the original rules. So he kept the session open for ages, just so that he could like make a point about not giving dominion to India in 1934. Holy fuck. Angsty guy. But yeah, uh, <laughs> Parliament has always been like that. It's two and a half swords across, so they don't kill each other. <laughs> it's my favorite parliament fact <laughs> i guess they'll kill people two and a half swords across with a sword i don't underestimate me <laughs> liberalism is so funny you know it takes itself seriously you know but the uh, liberal electoral the parliamentary democracy democracy itself you know like the fate of the world depends upon one vote 50 plus one votes yes that determines, you know, the American election or whatever, you know, like that it's, one vote, you know, decides, you know, history for everyone. First past the post is moribund. But like what the British can say that, can, that might go to their ego a bit for saying this, though, is that they certainly are like the Romans if they need to make their fucking parliament like that far apart because everyone was killing each other. It wasn't like out of fear of people killing each other. Everyone was killing each other. Every time there was a debate in Parliament and people couldn't like get to a conclusion, some fucker would pull his sword out and stab the other. And rather than confiscating the swords, mm. it would just like, all right, then we need to move the benches back. <laughs> 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 That's liberal democracy. You know, they, they wanted to be like the Romans so bad and they started stabbing each other the moment they did it. I, I like it couldn't be any more picturesque. Oh, Isn't yes, that what yes. happened to the good old Tiberius? Uh <laughs> but that but that's what's called civilization. That's civilization. That's the the garden, you know, the garden of civilization. And, and because you know, like everything outside of that is just, you know, the jungle. Didn't you hear? It's oh, the, the jungle the out there. The, the the racial jungle, as Joe Biden put it, is 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 is, is... yes. Because he used that like kind of logic to then create like a more racist persuasion of that statement. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was oh like a, an internal thing. I think he said to his wife. No, he said it to a, he said it at a press conference. Or, yes. He said it at a press it, conference. It is of course a farce and a joke, but there, there, there's a very subtle danger. Um, look at what's happening in, in the United States, uh, the so-called United States right now where uh, I heard there will be an election in a few days and everybody um, is obliged to vote. And if you don't go voting, you're personally responsible for the fact that it will be fascism. And um, so that's one thing, the, the, the whole blackmailing, you have to participate in our ritual or uh, you will go to hell, to fascist hell. Um, mm -hmm. But this has the effect that it actually, every time that you go into a voting booth, you are reprogramming your mind that you are participating in the political decision process and you're actually you are subconsciously tying yourself to the bourgeois parliamentary system which will never uh, help us which will never um yes. and you have to abide by the to... results of the vote you have to abide by the results of the vote yes. you have no right to protest against the vote mm -hmm. as well that's so all, all part of the process the voter is always right what I, I would what like I to was... know where the voter lives. I would really like to go and have a chat with him because um, I think he's not always right. That, that, that one point vote, Lenin you know, had... plus one vote, you know, that one vote there, you know, got to find that guy. This this was the point Lenin had about um, the needing a parliamentary strategy as well, because unlike uh, somewhere like Russia, where people didn't have very much parliamentary prejudices, where they latched on to like um, a reformism and electoralism people were very much taking arms to the street kind of thing you know the the electoralists and the reformists got steamrolled by the people while in europe it's very easy to get caught up in prejudices pre prevalent to parliament where one is quite sucked into voting 
And so, like, one of the things of the opposition is to show people that, like, this is what happens and you actually ask for the things you want. Like, it isn't just some, like, tactile strategy. They will turn against you like fucking rabid dogs. Like, it's rattling the cage. Because when you rattle the cage, people see, ain't no point in voting, nothing's gonna change. But you get those fucking radicals in, what do you think's gonna happen next? Things are gonna budge, you know? Like... It shows that like the the gains that you can get from the system are, are dribbles at best. So long as, and this is why it'd be best if we had the revolutionaries formulate a group, because if it targets the labor aristocracy and their interests, it will just fuck everything up. It will turn into another second internationalist party, and we won't really get anywhere. If it targets lower, poorer people's needs, the lumpen proletariat and the and the lower working class then it could succeed at rattling the cage and showing where the system is so unwilling to deal with situations, how homelessness will never be solved within a, a, a principally imperialist country. You know, if you notice, the only capitalist countries you tend to see ever even like go near ending homeless are always like... Hmm. I think we lost you. He'll be back. Okay, uh, uh, we're coming to conclusions in any case. Okay. Comrade Storm is his pseudonym. She's, she's here twice ah, now. There she is. Fucking Linux is being a prick. It keeps fucking crashing the fucking thing. Um, uh, what's it? So, with... um, What was I was saying? Um, in the electoralism? What was like the last few words I was saying? Because I was on about like a specific thing. Oh, I've oh. lost track. Fuck's sake, fucking Linux! Yeah, we were talking about parliamentarism and about what electoralism can do uh, to the revolutionaries. There was something like really specific I was moving on to. I said, "Did you do? Have you noticed something?" And I can't think of what the something is, and the something is the thing I was trying to get into. But it's uh -huh. possible that you were already cut off by then, Fuck. because we've seen you you're, you you like freeze, and we couldn't hear any anything anymore for a few uh, seconds. Hmm. Okay, Shit. so uh, you'll remember it. You know, let's just start. You know, around here with conclusions. Sure. So uh, Red Wasp. Uh, what uh, what should we be thinking about for this coming week? Um, well, never stop thinking about Palestine uh, to start with. And, and I heard that um, in a few weeks' time there, there will be um, the, 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 the most the, the hugest uh, uh, political spectacle in the world will be organized again the american um presidential elections um i actually uh th this week's uh friday sermon that i had prepared uh, uh, uh is about oh, that yes. so oh so then we should hear that now i forgot yeah. about that okay let's hear that you're reading then <laughs> so, wait i have it here All praise belongs to Allah. We praise him, we seek his help, we and, and we ask for his forgiveness. We seek his guidance, we seek refuge in Allah from the evils of our own selves and our own wrongdoings. Whomever Allah guides, no one can misguide, and whomever Allah leaves astray, no one can guide. I said, well, la ilaha illallah wahda wa la sharika la. I bear witness that there is no, no God but Allah alone and no partner. I said, when a Muhammad and Abduhu wa Rasuluhu, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger, whom he has chosen as his wilaya, as his leader, um, and he selected him for uh, for being his messenger, and he honored him with the prophethood as a keeper of his secrets and as a mercy to all the worlds. May Allah uh, may Allah's blessing be upon Muhammad and his family and upon and upon them be peace. Dear comrades and friends, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wa idha qila lahum la tufsidu fil ardi qalu inna ma nahnu muslihun. So whenever they are told, don't spread evil, don't spread destruction on the earth, and they say, really, we're just peacemakers. 
these days, all eyes of the world are more and more turning towards the biggest political spectacle on the planet. Previous time the spectacle was organ organized, it cost more than $14 billion. Imagine, comrades, what that amount could have accomplished for the hungry, for the poor, for the homeless, for those suffering under war and occupation. But instead, instead, it went into the coffers of the media, campaign managers, financiers of this great political spectacle. The media outlets across the globe are fixated on it, devoting their resources to every speech, every debate, every handshake, every scandal, every fart that any of the candidates uh, is able to fart. Um, and the spectacle that I am talking about is, of course, the American presidential election. Guy Debord, the, the, the French uh, activist and intellectual, in his book The Society of the Spectacle, argued that the modern world has turned uh, real social relations into images, into mere representations. He, he called this the spectacle. And the American elections are a prime example of this spectacle. Politics is being reduced to mere entertainment, where substantive politi uh, policies and hid uh, are hidden behind images branding and sound bites. It becomes a game, a performance, with the illusion that the people have a choice when in reality both options lead to the same outcome, the preservation of capitalism, of imperialism, of this monstrous status quo. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And don't mix the truth with falsehood or conceal the truth while you know it. Look at the candidates, comrades. Look at Trump and Vance on the one side, and then Harris and Waltz on the other side. Trump and Vance spin their alternative facts as if the January 6th attempted coup never happened. Vance even claimed in the presidential debate that Trump had, a peace, had peacefully transitioned to the power after the 2020 election, a bold distortion of the truth, covering an insurrection in the language of peace. Trump himself continued his xenophobic lies, uh, even claiming that migrants were eating away, were eating the dogs and the cats, the, the, the pets of Americans, Hugging using patience. fear, an absurd fear, to mask his real agenda, which is one of division, one of oppression, and most importantly, one of overexploitation of the American people and of all the countries abroad. On the other side, Harris and Walls pretend to be the champions of human rights while directly supporting, financing, and ordering around the, gen the genocide in, uh, in Palestine. Biden's fabrications about the so-called beheaded babies was designed to inflame the public sentiment and justify further atrocities, while Harris dismisses protesters who challenge her complicity, silencing them with, I am speaking, as if her authority, her power alone should be the arbiter of truth. And when they are told not to spread destruction on the earth, they say, really, we are the peacemakers. Comrades, both these candidates from the two so-called opposing parties, the two wings of the same one Imperial American party, both promise that they will bring peace. They tell us that they are the only solution, that they alone can bring stability. But in reality, they both support the worst atrocities, all in the name of the holy capitalist market and the sacred imperialist world order. These are the gods that they serve. The spectacle that we all live in gives the illusion of choice, a two-party system. But in reality, it's just two wings of one imperial party. This system exists to ban all other forms of political organization, ensuring that no voice of genuine opposition can rise. In silence, the anti-capitalist, the anti it silences the anti-capitalist, the anti-imperialist forces before they can even challenge power, restricting the people of to choosing between two faces of the same oppressor. The American empire reached its apex, its top during the unipolar moment that uh, started after the fall of the Berlin Wall. It was unmatched, unchallenged. It was the only superpower remaining in the world. And the high days of American he hegemony were marked by invasions, by coups, by regime changes, by economic domination across the globe. But now, comrades, we witness its decay. The internal contradictions of capitalism, the rising opposition worldwide, the failure of imperial wars, it all points to the decline of empire. 
Allah says in the Holy Quran, "Awalam yasiru fil ardi fayantahu kaifa kana aqibatu alazina kanu min qablihim kanu ashhada minhum quwatan." Did they never travel through the earth, around on the earth? And did they never observe the fate of those people who came before them? They were far greater. They were far more powerful than them. And the Quran reminds us over and over of the fall of empires that grew arrogant and unjust. The American empire is no exception. Its fall is inevitable, inshallah, as the oppressed rise, as the people awaken to their true power. O oh Allah, hasten the downfall of the American empire, the great shaitan of our ages. Grant us strength and perseverance to resist, to challenge and to dismantle the system of oppression. Protect those who stand for justice, those who march, those who speak through truth to power. Guide us towards a, towards a future where there is no exploitation, no colonialism, no oppression, only peace, justice, through freedom for all. Thank you. Dear comrades and friends, the messenger of Allah said that whoever pleases an unjust ruler and deviates from the right path is expelled from the religion of Allah. And the messenger said that whoever sees oppression, he should condemn it with his sword, with his hand if he can, with his mouth if he uh, if he cannot, with his hand or in his heart if that's the only option. But that's the weakest form of faith. Um, we're not called to support unjust rulers or unjust systems of oppression. As Muslims, we believe that there is no ruler than Allah. If it is not lawful for us to bow to systems built on exploitation and oppression. The Quran and the teachings of the prophets repeatedly remind us not to place our, uh, our faith in earthly structures of dominance, of violence, of power. Just as the psalmist warns us, some trust in chariots and some trust in horses, but we trust in the name of Allah or God. These metaphors of chariots and horses, actually the word for chariot is Merkava. These metaphors of not uh, uh, putting our trust in, 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 in chariots or horses, in tanks or missiles, these represent the, militically and, the military and political mach machinery of power, which ultimately will never deliver justice or salvation. Comrade Lenin quoted the Bible book of Daniel when he described these powers as giants on feet of clay. Seemingly invincible, but built on a fragile and exploitative foundation that will eventually crumble. Empires, are ruling, empires and ruling classes present themselves as solid and eternal. Did they not travel through the earth and observe the fate of those before them? They were greater and much more powerful than them. Imam Ali alayhi salam, explicitly tells Malik, uh, one of his comrades uh, who is appointed as a government that he must prioritize the well-being of the common people of all the people over the interests of the white uh, of the wealthy ruling elite he writes the common people are the pillars of the state they are the reserve forces and the real strength against the enemy ali alayhi salam emphasizes that rulers must not must act justly, justly to protect the masses even if it means going in against the powerful elites. In contrast, the bourgeois political parties in capitalist states receive large amounts of financial support from the capitalist class, particularly, particularly through donations, lobbying, corporate sponsorships, and so on. This financial dependence means that they serve the interests of the wealthy, the very elites who profit from exploitation. And as a result, they are beholden to the capitalist system. Instead of advocating for the oppressed masses, these political parties protect the status quo and maintain the structures of economic inequality. Despite claiming to serve the people, these parties cannot side with the uh, despite claiming to serve the people, these parties cannot side with the oppressed because their survival depends on the very system that thrives on oppression. This is why the false promises of reform from bourgeois political parties, whether through progressive platforms or claims to be the lesser evil, cannot and will never bring about real justice or liberation. They are part of the machinery that upholds the capitalist order. Do not mix truth with falsehood. Do not conceal the truth while you know it. Just as Imam Ali alayhi salam emphasized that true justice requires us to reject the dominance of the elite and stand firmly with the masses, even when that means opposing the, the, the systems of power. Comrades, 
never believe what the bourgeois politicians tell you. The hypocrisy of the so-called progressive liberal bourgeoisie is nothing new. Many of these so-called progressives, whether in the United States or other Western countries, speak the language of social justice while simultaneously supporting imperial wars, colonialism, exploitation and genocide. There is an often quoted saying from the Black Panther, if you scratch a liberal, a fascist will bleed. This exposes the fact that when faced, faced with a real revolutionary challenge, liberals often side, always side with the reactionary forces of capitalism and imperialism. By pretending to be the so-called lesser evil, these, progressive, these progressives actively betray the oppressed masses. They claim to champion the marginalized communities, but they continue to uphold the structures that perpetuate inequality and oppression. Supporting the so-called lesser evil is a political trap that many of our comrades have fallen into. Each election cycle, progressives and re progressive and revolutionary forces are co-opted and recuperated into supporting candidates who promise incremental change but only reinforce the status quo. This endless cycle of oppression undermines our efforts to build real power. And as long as we continue to rally behind these electoral campaigns of the lesser evil, we sabotage our own struggle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us, Inna Allahu la yukhairu ma bi qawmin hatta yukhairu ma bi anfusihim. Sorry. <laughs> Indeed, Allah does not change the condition of a people until they change what is in themselves. Liberation will not come from the ballot boxes of the oppressor. It will come from our own collective struggle for a new world. Abu Dhar, uh, the, the famous comrade of uh, Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, he said, I am perplexed by a hungry person who has no bread in his house. Why does he not arise from uh, among the people with his sword unsheathed and rebel? This statement, which is so often quoted by comrade Ali Shariati, reminds us that passivity in the face of oppression is not an option. Islamic history is a history of resistance. From the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to, to the revolts of Imam Hussein alayhi salam and the resistance of Imam Ali alayhi salam against corruption, Muslims have always stood against injustice. Abu Dhar's words reflect the spirit of rebellion that Islam carries against hunger, poverty, exploitation and tyranny. When the poor and the oppressed are denied justice, they must rise up when there's, with their swords unsheathed against the oppressors, against the exploitation, against the system that keeps them down. Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, uh, he said, hope for fitna, hope for fitna. For it is in there, in fitna, is the perishing of the tyrants and the purification of the earth from immoral people. This hadith speaks of the transformative potential of chaos and upheaval, fitna, often seen as a trial or a tribulation, can also, mean, can also become the means through which tyrants fall and the oppressed are liberated. It's a reminder that struggle and resistance against unjust rulers may bring disorder, but that disorder is necessary for the purification of the earth and the establishment of justice. We must reject the illusion of choice between factions of the ruling class and indeed focus on building dual power, creating our own liberatory institutions, systems and organizations that are outside of the control of the capitalist state. These are the structures that will allow us in the end to challenge the oppression and build a new society based on justice, equality, freedom and peace. O oh Allah, please send blessings upon Muhammad and his family. O oh Allah, bless all the Mujahideen, all those who struggle against all forms of oppression and exploitation and for the liberation of all the peoples. O oh Allah, bless all our comrades, those who know and those those we know and those we don't know, all who are struggling on your path, make your efforts for liberation successful. Make our efforts successful. Bless all our activism. O oh Allah, hasten the peaceful end of the occupation of Palestine. Hasten the peaceful end of the occupation of Palestine. Of Palestine, bring an end to the imperialist American world order. O oh Allah, bring about the end of capitalism and transform it into a just socialist society. And O oh Allah, 
curse the war criminals who led who lead the genocidal war against the people of Palestine and Lebanon, curse the imperialist governments that support the Zionist crimes, curse the weapon manufacturers who produce arms to kill innocent Palestinians, O oh Allah, curse the bourgeoisie who benefit from this colonial, imperialist and capitalist system. O oh Allah, curse those in the media who have become accomplices in genocide through their distorted reporting reporting and their promotion of Zionist lies. Amin, 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 ya Rabbil al -Amin. And O oh Allah, may Palestine soon be free in our days, inshallah. Amen. Beautifully <coughs> spoken. Inspiring, even though I'm sick. Amin. Okay. Very good text. My no. English is so weak, so when when uh, it's quickly, I cannot, I can't understand every everything, but I understand the point. And thanks you for uh, for your text. Yeah, inshallah, I, I will share the written version again on the blogs of Muslim for Socialism. Okay, inshallah. and also in the uh, comments uh, on YouTube. <coughs> and we need to Last share time, this uh, video as well, much as we can. Uh, you no. have a, a text last week, and I want this. I want this text too about uh, the Yahya Sinwa. I, I yes, forgot I sent it to you. Share it. I'm so sorry. I sent no it to problem. you. I, You're being I a little shit. <laughs> in, in French. Oh, in French. Yes, it has to be translated into French now. And uh, no, one has to uh, get machine uh, translate it, just do the lazy thing. No, yeah, and you have to correct Google. Google sometimes you know makes big mistakes. That's the funny thing. What you do is you machine translate it into like um like a language that doesn't translate well into English, like Chinese or Mandarin or something, and then you uh you go uh you go then translate that into uh like yes, um, okay, uh, so a we Middle can... Eastern language. So we'll go for uh, okay, we'll go we for Arabic. Subvert. And then so you translate Google. it into French. And by the time it gets back to French, it just makes no sense at all. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> There's some okay. videos on YouTube that does it with like history and it'll be like World War One. And it's like there's like these like returning characters of the man and stuff like that. It, it turns into this absolute shit fest of hell. Like Okay. Now we're concluding here. You're supposed to be concluding. Do you have a conclusion to give I us? I do have a conclusion. Uh, oh. That's it. What we're seeing is we're seeing an intensification. Everyone is allowing for World War Three to open up. That's what this attack on Iran uh, two days ago is sort of showing us. It's what the um, Donald Trump in the um, was it the was it the Biden debate uh, where he goes, "I'll make BB finish the job." When they were talking about like wanting to find a peace in this situation like the democrats are full of shit they don't care about peace you know why they they've been saying stuff like this is because people have been scaring them and people need to scare them more but it does show that they're trying to act more moderate than the other side which is taking the more like yeah we need to just like make this genocide happen and then they need to also attack lebanon they need to also attack iran the u.s needs to show its strength like, that's the kind of, like, situation we got coming now. So this isn't coming to no easy end. And people need to get the fuck out and get involved in the struggle. I am severely disabled. I am, like, quite visibly bedridden right now. And I have been going to protests. So I don't know what the excuses are for, like, a lot of people who are quite fit and able to not go to these things. Because if it's the... Oh, you'll lose your job. Like any protest didn't threaten people to lose their jobs. You know what organizes the protests? The unions. So go put a mm. mask on. That's what they tell you. Mm. Like, it's like any excuse not to do anything. Like, mm. do you know what Palestinians are losing? Their lives. You know, like I can't have a job. I am always poor and I survive. So it's worth the fucking risk, I say. Take the fucking risk and dare to fucking win. Like, mm. actually get out there and struggle. Because I know sometimes these arguments can seem fucking toxic, but that's because it's usually middle class people saying this. I'm poor as fucking shit, and I'm going to fucking say it now. If we don't get our fucking finger out our ass 
and start doing something, we have more blood on our hands. All the blood that is being shed, we benefit from. That's imperialism. We benefit from it. So if we don't do something to oppose it, we are liking the fact that we have blood on our hands, that we exchange blood money for food, that we uh, go and live about our lives. You know, we, we uh, uh, clo close, put the shutters on, ignore the, the, the reality of the situation. And this, if we don't get our fucking shit together, we have the blood of hundreds of thousands of Palestinians on our hands. Do people, does that help people go to sleep at night? Did it, did it help with the tens of thousands of Yemenese people that we have the blood of our hands on from a war the British started? Do we, the, there's the, the three million in Iraq or the, the one and a half million in Afghanistan? Is, are those like pleasant numbers for people to hear? Do they like, cause we stopped protesting enough about the wars you know, people give up eventually. Like, where were the Afghanistan protests in 2012? You know, where were the Afghanistan protests in 2016? No one give a shit, you know? But, oh, some people were protesting Syria, but why weren't we protesting all of them? Why isn't the Sudan being mentioned? Why isn't Morocco and what they're doing to West Sahara not being mentioned? What about Kenya and the British troops that are fucking stationed there? What about, you know, none of this stuff goes down because the only two empires that exist to people is fucking America and fucking China and sometimes Russia if they want to make a cameo and they kind of ignore all the other horrible things that are going on around the world. And they also don't seem to get what, like, small empires are doing either. It's this very two-dimensional worldview and they can't interwove and stuff. Why should Sudan get left behind um, in a situation when Palestine isn't leaving Sudan behind, Palestine showed solidarity for Sudan. So while we're showing solidarity for Palestine, we should be able to show solidarity for the Sudan, who's being, uh, uh, they've been under a genocide for quite a long fucking time now. We got Somalia, who's trying to have, you know, uh, they're, they're trying to be um, uh, fucking, they're, they're being pitched against uh, Ethiopia again with the Ethiopian war. This conflict with Somalia and Ethiopia has been going on since the 70s, pretty much. Like, it's been on and off. But you have the French, the British, the Americans, the Chinese, and the Russians involved in that conflict there. And so there's a whole corridor of shit going on there. You have the Somaliland break off and no one really recognizing its existence. Um, you know, Africa is such a massive place. It is the largest ethnic uh, biome in the fucking world you know more ethnicities than any other uh, like semi continent in the world because Africa is a part of the Afro-Eurasian continent um, and uh, what's it uh, continental Africa is um, you know constantly ignored I would argue um, Asia always ends up taking a principal role in it and that's because there's white Asians as well as black and brown Asians so white people can relate to Asia more because there's uh, there's a, oppressors that are quite like them in Asia uh, which gets into a point I made with race well his computer froze again okay uh, Dunya Perhaps you have a conclusion to present to Sorry us. Sorry about that. I disconnected. Um, so what's it? White people, yes. they like Asia because they can relate to the oppressors in Asia. So they focus on Asia more than any part of the world. Uh, this gets into Orientalism and all that other sort of stuff. I mean, you should see the, the contradictive way the British look at Asia. Um, Iran, Persia, and their relationship to the British is kind of a really big one in this. Like uh, the Iranians often see themselves as like the British of Asia. Um, yeah, the tea drinking diplomacy, that's where the British got it from. Uh, and, uh, it's that whole, you know, you sit down with any leader and you have, you have your tea and biscuits with them. Uh, and that's a big part of the, uh, diplomatic strategy that they took from Persia itself. Um, but it becomes like Africa gets ignored because even though there are oppressors in Africa, the white people, the oppressors in Africa look very similar to the oppressed. So it's very hard for them to racialize Africa with colorism and other stuff like that. Um, maybe with older racism, it was a little easier for them to quantify it like that. You can kind of see that with the way they did the slave trade. But the, uh, what's it, colorism makes Africa a place that white people would like to ignore because they're all the oppressed as far as white people think of it. 
And so, like, they don't want to deal with any part of it. Um, but with Asia, they can they can fetishize the the Brahmin, or they can fetishize the Han, or they can fetishize the Persian. Okay, uh, the, the uh, conclude then, you know, for this coming week then. What uh, do you expect is uh, going People to be happening? People need to learn What's more. They need to, they need to get a grasp of what colonialism is. Like, it's this, this, this hollow mindedness around colonialism that is not helping us learn our struggles. I, I, the way people interface with a lot of this stuff is they don't learn about it. It's they, they, they like the virtue signal. And so they, they know Palestine needs solidarity because, of course, it needs solidarity. It's under terror right now. But if you call yourself a goddamn communist, you need to know the Palestinian struggles history. And then you need to also start learning about the Sudan people's struggles history and go learn about West Sahara and other stuff like that. Go learn about what's going on um, with uh, Eritrea and countries like that. Um, go well, learn you've, about you've what's got a whole going program on in there, Kenya. You know, a complete program. This should become the body of uh, an opposition within the Labour Party or a coalition which is attempting to set up an alternative to the Labour Party. But in one way or another, there's got to be another front that carries on, you know, with all of these issues that you're bringing up here now. Because now we're dealing with, you know, a world program, a program, a revolutionary program for all of the world, a world revolution, in effect. And we need to have, you know, a formation that can carry this kind of a program, whether in the Labour Party or without the Labour Party. I think this is where your remarks are going to. Entering the Labour Party is suicide, political yeah. suicide. Hmm. I don't think revolutionaries have anything to look for in any social democrat party. It's a waste of time. You, the the point mm -hmm. where the, where you had a chance of changing them from within is uh, passed more than a century ago. Um, mm -hmm. I think that the only thing we that with the 1925 constitution of the Labour Party, where they explicitly said that they were there to like combat Marxism, like mm -hmm. in like big capital M Marxism. So like. It's been mm. so long gone. Mm. We yeah, need a revolutionary strategy. In, like, in, nine, in 1914, almost all the social democrat parties of uh, the, the imperialist countries um, immediately enthusiastically started supporting their own chauvinist uh, bourgeoisie in a world war. So, I mean, it was to me, that was the purposes. point where they the proved... bourgeoisie is the good bourgeoisie. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> Yes, the <laughs> those front. dastardly British that are the bad bourgeoisie, the German bourgeoisie. Yeah. Don't look at what we did to China in the last century. But the German bourgeoisie is perfectly fine. They're, they're, they're the good bourgeoisie, progressive even. Uh, yeah. Oh, and uh, it doesn't matter anyway, because super imperialism has made like nations no longer exist or summer. It, it, it sounds like the kind of fucking shit that like the, the petty bourgeois anarchists would cook up, you know, the, um, the pseudo. Or you can become a candidate, Kara. Independent, an independent candidate in the elections, you know, if there's nobody around in your area, you know, to actually relate to. I'm going to be a God. candidate in the next election Allergic against the local uh, genocidal, you know, Zionist who represents the Jewish community here in Montreal. In the writing of uh, Darcy McGee, I think it's called. <laughs> and uh, I've already announced that I'm going to be taking on this guy, you know, like I don't care from where, you know, even if I'm going to be doing it, you know, from Palestine. But uh, they've got to be stopped. And in all areas, all arenas, including electoralism, there's got to be an alternative. Okay, conclusion from Dunya then. What is uh, going to be happening? Conclusion, uh, the world will never be free if the Palestine will not be. Hmm. So we must start by, uh, by that. We need to fight the colonialism, the Zionism, the capitalism, and the imperialism. I want, uh, I want to say that if I need to go around the world for build this power, for build this community, for build this group to fight against all of that, I will do. Even if I can lose my life, it's not a problem. Every day we see the people died and I can't, I can't live like that. I prefer to be died than to live in this world. So, we must continue to fight and to try to build to build uh, the, this 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 big community, and from all the world, not from just front of us, because we will never we will never find a way like that. I can speak with many people. 
I feel that sometimes they don't care. So if we build, you know, one time I repeat it because uh, it's important. In Kufar Kadum, where we was with Abraham, every time they say to us, if you give us three people like you, like you, 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 me, in Palestine, in all the village and all the city, the army will back. So just three people by the village and the city. So we can do it in all the world. There is many activists, but we are far. We need to build a community. I don't know how we can do, but we need it. For me, it's my conclusion. I don't know if you understand my, my English very well. Beautiful. Fine. Okay, thank you. Et aussi uh, un message pour les Français et les Québécois. Uh, un message pour les, les Français. Uh, message pour les Français et les Québécois. Les Français uh, devraient. Uh, les Français, ils manifestent uh, tous les vendredis ou maintenant un petit peu plus. Mais quand ils rentrent chez eux, ils font une vie normale. I can't un... I can't understand how the people can live a normal life. Me, I can't. I can't. I, I live beside the sea. I can't go to the sea like it's normal. I can't. I, I, I lose my mind. So I need to, to say to the French, j'ai besoin de dire aux Français qui se réveillent, mais tous les jours, pas que le vendredi, pas que le mercredi, pas que tous les jours. Uh, je ne sais pas comment on dit en anglais, mais je, je culpabilise de manger, je culpabilise de dormir. J'ai l'impression de les abandonner quand je vais dormir. Et des fois, on me dit, « Sometimes the people say to me that, but be quiet, disconnected, dunya, but I can disconnected. You are disconnected, you are the problem, not me. Mm » -hmm. I ouais. feel... I feel alone in France sometimes, in my mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not enough to go to the demonstration and we need to boycott, to boycott. And if we need to boycott the bank, a lot of things like that to, to, to break the Zionism, the capitalism, we can do it if we are a lot. And that will work. Mm -hmm. what, what we can do. So, mm -hmm. C'est pour ça que je vais venir te voir à Montréal, je, vais... je suis prête à voyager, je suis prête à aller en Afrique, je suis prête à aller faire des conférences partout dans le monde, mais je ne suis pas prête à rester assise sur mon canapé. Mm -hmm. I, I am not ready to, to, to sit here and to don't do anything. Right. If I need to travel, I will. Mm -hmm. I will to, to make conferences and to, to give this power. I, I believe on this power, but... Yeah, We must have gone to fucking London on those yeah. pretexts, you know, 140 miles there, 140 miles back, because like there was a national demo. I missed the chance to get the coaches, which would have cost me like a tenner to go on, and I ended up having to spend like bloody 40 quid, but it was worth it. Like, you know, if my poor ass can spend a chunk of money, I don't know why all these people with all this chunk of change, they're like, oh, there's no protests in my area. It's like you got this middle class <laughs> job, you could go travel to a different area. Like, there's so much we can do in, like, God, in, especially in Europe with our fucking, like, public transport systems. We've got, yeah, they're kind of knackered now, but we got good train systems and stuff like that. It's easy for people to find places to get to and struggle. Like, everyone wants an excuse. Yeah. Okay. So we know what to do. We'll do it. I, you know, like, uh, I love this forum, what to do. It's you know, like, I love meeting excuses. all of you, you know, because it's... Uh, It's my antidote, you know, to craziness. Otherwise, <laughs> this is an island of sanity here. Yeah. Me too. Very good. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. So, uh, be speaking with you all soon. And now we can say bye. Yeah. Attends. Attends une minute. Tu as arrêté uh, l'enregistrement, là. No, c'est uh, enregistré. Ah, non, non. Stop. We can stop because I want to ask some question, personality question. Okay, on stop. <laughs>